Okay, thank you very much. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, now, can I just uh, make everybody in the room aware uh, that this, this is a hybrid system on these cameras and they follow the microphones. Um, so, um, and this meeting is also being recorded. So I must make you aware that at some point you may be shown in the background if you've got a member speaking in front of you. As long as you don't mind that, you're welcome to stay. If you do object to that, um, and then I'm afraid the best way for you to do is leave because I can't control where the cameras go. Um, so I'd like to welcome everyone to this hybrid planning meeting. Meeting, The meeting is being broadcast and recorded, and if there is any technical issues, sorry? Oh, have we gone live? Can you go? The normal rules of debate apply, and including those the requirement for you to be present for the duration of the whole debate. So if you're absent for any part of the debate, then you should abstain from voting. For clarity, voting is only permitted by members of the planning committee who are present in the room. Any member joining the meeting remotely is able to participate in the debate, but are not able to vote. Now to the first item on the agenda, which are Apologies. Are there any apologies for absence? I've received apologi apologies from Councillor Mrs. Mackenzie Boyle. And, and also Mrs. Mackenzie. Good morning, Councillor. Um, you've got Pauline, have you? Okay. I can see the members of the committee are in attendance and their names will be recorded in the minutes. Uh, please, can the clerk confirm if any members are joining remotely and if those members could confirm their attendance when Hannah calls your name? <coughs> I have Councillor Skinner attending remotely. Present. That's everyone, Chair. Are there any other members that are remote that wish to record their presence? Okay, great. Item two on the agenda is to prove as a correct record the minutes of the committee hold on the 21st of April. Chair. And before I ask... I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, I think I should have given apologies for Paul Bidwell because I thought he might be online, but I don't think he's here. Is he? Okay, we'll record his apologies. Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, so we're going on then to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting held on the 21st of April. Before I ask Councillor Brossard to uh, second the motion, please indicate if you have any issue with accuracy. Anybody? No one online? No, 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 okay. No. Sorry. Sorry. Councillor Brossard. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you. All those All in favour to approve, please show. Approve, please show. Still, somebody's got their microphone on. Can you just make sure your computers are muted? rather than just twitched off. That was muted, wasn't it? Yeah. Thank you. The full text of declarations of interest is set out on the agenda, uh, item three. If any member has a disclosable pecuniary interest or an affected interest to declare, please indicate and I'll come to you in turn. Does any member wish to declare an interest? No one, thank you. So the fourth item on the agenda is consideration of any urgent items. I haven't been notified of any. No, none notified, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. So therefore, we go on to agenda item five, which is Bracknell Town Football Club Larges Lane, which is an outline application to include access, appearance and layout and scale for demolition of existing dwelling and sports buildings and the erection of 117 apartments with associated parking. Would the planning officer like to take us through the application, please? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Joan Mail, planning officer. I'll just share my screen with you. Hopefully you can see that now. No, not yet, Joan. Oh. Oh. Yep, we can now. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Um, this application relates to Bracknell Town Football Club, Larges Lane in Bracknell. This aerial photograph provides the context of the site with the cricket club to the north and residential properties to the east, south and west. 
there's a considerable difference in levels across the site, with its western edge being some 6.3 metres above the level of Largest Lane. The application is submitted in outline form with matters of access, layout, scale and external appearance to be determined. Only the issue of landscaping is currently reserved. As originally submitted, the application proposed the erection of 126 apartments to be accommodated within three buildings, ranging from two to five storeys within the site. The application was presented to an advisory meeting of the Planning Committee on the 24th of March of this year, at which a motion to endorse the officer's recommendation for approval of the scheme was not supported, such that the application was required to be presented to an in-person meeting of the Planning Committee for determination. Since the committee's previous consideration of the application, the proposed scheme has been amended. The scale of development has been reduced, removing one floor of accommodation from um, Block C and reducing the number of proposed flats from 126 to 117, i.e. a reduction of nine units. The parking layout remains the same, however the reduction in number of units improves the parking ratio from 1.33 to 1.43 parking spaces per unit. In addition, three car club parking spaces are proposed and the provision of a car club would be secured by means of a legal agreement. Evidence suggests that each car club space creates an equivalent of nine parking spaces, which would improve the parking ratio at the site further to 1.63 spaces per flat. Further information about this is set out on the supplementary report. In addition, EV charging infrastructure, either active or passive, is now shown as being provided to all spaces. A targeted reconsultation of local residents has been undertaken in relation to the amended scheme and details of additional representations have been included on the supplementary report. The final views of the drainage officer have also been received and these raise no objection to the scheme subject to conditions. These are also referred to on the supplementary report. I'll now show you some plans for the development and we'll focus on the changes made since the committee last considered the scheme. So the development now proposes 117 apartments comprising 14 one bed, 89 two bed and 14 three bedroom flats. The accommodation will be provided within three detached blocks set round a central communal area. 25% of the proposed units will be offered as affordable housing in accordance with current policy requirements. Access to the site would be gained from Largest Lane, with the existing access at the northern end of the site being improved and access provided to the adjacent cricket club. The proposed development would be provided in blocks which vary in height from two to five storeys. Changes in levels across the site would be used to facilitate the provision of undercroft parking, which would be accessed from the central courtyard in front of block B, in this position here, and above which podium level amenity space would be provided more gradual level changes would be provided elsewhere across the site. Block A would be five storeys in height with the fifth level inset. It remains unchanged from when the pre committee previously considered the application and would be constructed using a pallet of materials similar to those used in developments within the surrounding area. Access would be from the central courtyard on the southern elevation of the building, which would also provide access to the refuse here and cycle stores here. Block B would also be unchanged and is five storeys above ground level with access to the building from within the undercroft parking by means of lifts or stairs and also from the central courtyard by steps up to the amenity space. Cycle and refuse storage would also be provided within the undercroft here. Block C has been amended by the removal of one floor on the eastern part of the building, which runs along the boundary with Robins Gate. The overall height of the building has now been reduced to approximately 10 metres. When viewed from the south, it would appear as a two storey building on its western side, which would be partially constructed above the undercroft parking here, rising to three storeys on the eastern side. Cycle and refuse storage is again provided at ground floor level, opening onto the central courtyard here. This use and change of levels across the site is best explained by comparing the proposed parking layout with the amenity space plan. This parking plan shows the access into the site and into the central courtyard where 18 parking spaces are provided. 
access to the Undercroft parking is provided from the central area with a total of 119 parking spaces being provided within this space. The green colouring on this plan shows the active EV charging points with the blue spaces indicating passive charging, that is provision of infrastructure to allow future activation and the three car club parking spaces are shown orange on the site's eastern side. This plan shows how the amenity space is provided at podium level above the Undercroft parking. And this artist's impression shows access to the Undercroft parking from the central courtyard area, although it should be noted that this shows the um, building C as originally proposed at its four storey height, and this has now been reduced to three storey level as previously indicated. As members will recall, the site is allocated for housing within the site allocations local plan and is located in a sustainable location approximately half a kilometre from the town centre. The relevant SALP policy requires that an alternative location should be found for the football club and the applicant has put forward a package of mitigation measures intended to demonstrate that the lost facility will be replaced by equivalent or better provision. This comprises shared use of facilities at Ranola School and at their playing field immediately opposite the site in Lodges Lane and a shared facility at Sandhurst Football Club at Bottom Meadow in Sandhurst. The football club is already relocated to Sandhurst and the application site is currently vacant and unused. Sport England are a statutory consultee in the case of planning applications where the loss of a playing field is proposed and are supportive of the scheme due to benefits that have been provided to grassroots football. There's therefore considered to be no objection to the pr principle of the development, which is consistent with the terms of its allocation within the local plan. It's considered that proposed development has an acceptable relationship which, with adjacent development and its de design and scale is appropriate to the character and amenities of the area. The recent amendments made to Block C further improve the relationship between this building and the adjacent development at Robins Gate. The reduction in number of units and the provision of three car club parking spaces improves the ratio of spaces per unit. And as set out within the report, based on robust evidence, the Highway Authority is satisfied that the proposed level of parking is sufficient to serve the development, subject to a condition that the parking spaces remain unallocated. Additional explanation of the survey information contained within the report is included on the supplementary report. Members will note that the proposed parking ratio per unit proposed on site exceeds the demand ratio established on nearby comparable sites. The revised plans also show EV charging infrastructure being provided to all spaces. The application demonstrates biodiversity net gain, provides a policy compliant level of affordable housing and SPA mitigation and the provision of appropriate levels of infrastructure can all be secured by means of the Section 106 agreement. Accordingly, the application is recommended for approval as set out in the agenda and as amended by the supplementary report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Joan. Do members have any questions, please? Any online? Oh, Councillor Angel. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Angel speaking. Can I just ask, um, on the cricket ground, access has that been agreed with the cricket club because it's changed obviously from where it is now joe do you know if that's the case uh, it's my understanding that it is a matter of agreement between the, t the two clubs yes that's the virgo I'll take that, Joe, for the first one, uh, for the second part. The, the landscaping is a reserved matter, and so therefore, if you wish that to come back to committee, you're more than welcome as a member to call that back into committee and for this committee to uh, decide on the landscaping. Uh, Joe, do you want to answer the first question about oh. EV? Um, apologies, sir, I didn't hear the question. There was, there was, was an about, issue. Is, is there any um, solar panels on the roof, or is that a planning issue? 
Uh, that would be a matter that could be conditioned um, in order that uh, those details are submitted at a later stage. Um, I think there is a condition on the agenda to that effect, and I'll just find the number for you. Uh, apologies, sir. It's um, condition eight on the agenda requires an energy demand assessment to be submitted prior to the commencement of, um, of above slab level works on site, and that would uh, uh, secure any kind of uh, PV uh, cells as part of that. Joe, Joe, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Sorry. Okay. Councillor Virgo, you might need to pull that microphone slightly closer to you. Can you hear him now, Joe? No, I'm afraid I can't. OK, Joe, I think Councillor Virgo would like to be specific about the solar cells. So when we get the energy statement, is that something that you could share with councillors for us to see? Would that be suitable, Councillor Virgo? Could, could you do that, please, Joe? Can you share the yes. energy statement? Yes, certainly. It would be um, come forward as a part of a conditions application. Have you got a question, Councillor? Yes, yeah. to just carry on from there, that I'm sure that they would... But the question being, sir, that EVs would be included on that as well. I'm sure that that, that is incorporated in the design, but it would be... be Electric therefore. vehicles are. Yeah, yeah, it is. I thought it would okay. be. Okay. Uh, Councillor Brown. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, we have diagrams, uh, uh, drawings of the buildings um, and a, a nice picture of it, it uh, as you would go in and see the parking there's not there appears to be no sort of pictogram of the street view and the relative heights and sizes of buildings near other you know near the surrounding houses did you ask did was you asked that earlier joe um no there was a part of the design and access statement there was a diagram that did show the relative heights of the buildings um, to uh, development on, on the wider area. We haven't specifically got a street view that would show the relationship of the, um, this development from Larges Lane, but the, uh, the last um, sort of artist's impression that I submitted was intended to give a sort of an indication of the scale of the building as, um, as it's viewed within the site. Thank you. Um, oh, I've just been given another <laughs> piece of paper with some very useful... Do you have another question? Yes, please. Um, about the building A, that I know that's not really very near uh, other residential dwellings, but it's quite tall next to the cricket pitch. I mean, that's that's seen as okay, clearly. Um, yeah, okay. overlooking on a cricket pitch is not a planning issue. <laughs> so no. In okay. fact, it's probably that's seen it. as a positive benefit if you want to watch that's a cricket positive. match. Um, <laughs> okay. Any other questions, members? Anything online, Vice Chair? Okay, as nobody else has uh, got any other questions, um, I will move the officer's recommendation as amended on pages. I'm just being told by my Vice Chair. Supplementary, it's supplementary, yeah. One to five. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mrs. Hayes. Sorry, Councillor Mrs. Hayes is seconding. Uh, members, you may remember, I'm sure you do, that we had this before us before, um, and there was quite a lot of um, quite a lot of debate um, about the about the parking uh, and about the size of Building C. Uh, and you will see that Building C has been uh, significantly re reduced from three stories down to two. 
which of course subsequently means that there are less properties and therefore the parking demand is less on this, on this site. In addition to that, there's been addition to um, car club spaces, which we are quite used to here in Bracknell, that we've passed planning permission on car club spaces in, um, in properties not too far from here. In fact, you look out the back of this building and there's some of them. Um, and so that um, it now is um, parking exceeds the normal demand. Is there a second that wish to speak or do you wish to reserve? Uh, does any other member wish to speak? Council, Dr. Barnard. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'd just really like to echo the comments you made. When I saw the application last time, I did think it was just, you know, not really well accommodated in terms of what was suggested <laughs> for the site. And I believe that the debate and discussion we had last time has informed a planning application which feels better and feels better contained within the site. Um, I, I, I do want to note that although there have been, con you know, as we see tonight, there's a considerable amount of support for this and the letters we've received, there is still the voice of some local residents who, you know, quite understandably have reservations about this. But I think the one thing that we need to remember is that there are planning policies that wherever possible do their best they can to control and manage developments in the site, and I believe these are now, you know, pretty consistent with that. But I do also think as well that some of the other issues that have come up in discussion which might not form part of this, you know, the outline application we've got, but in terms of the environmental footprint and things like that, are going to be really well considered. This is a town centre location. You've indicated you know, that the parking fits within that, and therefore I think there are more positive grounds for proving it than there were last time. And I think you know, the important message for me is that the planning committee looks at all the issues objectively, weighs up the planning issues and concerns that are raised, and comes to a decision based on the facts. It's great to see their support but there's also that voice which isn't quite as often heard, which are those that still have concerns. So thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Birch. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, first of all, thanks to everybody uh, who has sent me, and I think everybody else on the planet, uh, letters yeah. and emails and marketing uh, uh, and media. Uh, um, uh, it's, it, and it's nice tonight to see so many people uh, taking an interest. However, I cannot support uh, your motion. Uh, uh, I attended the site visit uh, on Saturday to get uh, a much uh, uh, better view of it in literal sense. And I've read oh, just about all the evidence uh, that has been <coughs> presented and I'm taking into account that the latest uh, officer uh, presentation. But in actual fact, uh, I'm, we start with the site being allocated in the site allocations local plan, which it is, so that's not a problem, except that uh, it's already got 18 of the suggested uh, um, uh, 102 um, established on it. So if we uh, add the 117 proposed to uh, the uh, uh, 18 that are already there, uh, we find ourselves with 135 dwellings on an allocated site that wasn't allocated for that number uh, of dwellings. So uh, I'm somewhat troubled uh, by that. Um, and uh, uh, I haven't prepared a blue sheet, which is uh, 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 a, a sheet that contains all the policy areas, but as I uh, mention the points that trouble me, I will give proper policy reference so that if, as I hope, your motion falls, Chairman, uh, uh, we will be able to put together a meaningful submission as refusal. Um, only one of the buildings, have, one of my first comments at the last meeting, only one of the buildings has been reduced in height. So the others are still out of character with the area which is contrary to CS7 and SAVE policy EN20. Uh, it's still not sympathetic with the character of the area by virtue of its scale, mass, layout and siting. Um, as, as such, 
I consider it still that the proposed development is overdevelopment. It says it in the papers, I think under 929, as such it is considered that the proposed development, whilst creating its own distinctive character, would respect the existing character and appearance. <coughs> For me, that is confirmation that it is not in keeping with the existing character and appearance and that to only respect the existing character and appearance does not say it complies with. And that is what, in my view, with planning policies, things are supposed to do. If we have to go so, uh, uh, just applying respect for things, uh, it's going to make the uh, 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 application of policy very difficult. It is therefore contrary to policy CS7 and EN20 and the adopted design SPD. Right? A residential amenity was the other element and I notice that residents have been contacted uh, and some have been implicated and so forth but um, I put it to members that people around the site who will not be able to enjoy the amenity of their homes and gardens without being looked down on uh, from a people uh, who will be at a considerable height. And I noticed all the movements of two metres here and so many metres there. But the net effect is still that if you are in your back garden and somebody's five storeys up over there, you are going to be intimidated by the uh, uh, overbearing nature of those structures. This makes the layout and height of the site contrary to policy EN20 of the local plan. And I notice also, so, and I'm, I'm coming to my final point, thank you, I saw you looking there, uh, that I was troubled by uh, the statement in 942 planning to put double yellow lines within the site to control over spill parking. Um, if you're going to put double yellow lines inside the site, then the parking will overspill outside and into the surrounding area. That <coughs> is a fact of life in that context. Um, and it states in there that it is that by doing it is agreed to be an intensification of use over the course of the day. So there are still doubts in the report about the parking and it uses the term in 5.2 deemed sufficient. It does not state compliant. So uh, it does not comply with our parking standards. I do not believe so a small reduction in the dwellings and a car club that where the uh, uh, language used was it suggests a reduction of nine. It doesn't guarantee a reduction of nine. But a car club will make the roads around the site any safer. I believe it would not, and especially at school drop-off and collection time. This means it does not comply with our parking standards and is therefore contrary to policy M4, M9, CS23 and CS24 and of course the MPPF. And with that, I have to do it that way. So in order to include all the necessary policy references. Thank, Thank you, you, Councillor. Councillor Virgo. Um, can you hear me now, Mr. Chilton? Can you? Yeah, sorry, I'm using well, I, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Um, having listened to uh, to the councillor and his thoughts, I, I, I've always been slightly troubled by by the parking. To be honest, I, I think I, I want to say first of all that when we refused it last time, um, and we gave very specific notices as to why that is, I think the developer has tried his utmost to be absolutely honest to get this right. 
Um, I'm very pleased to see the EVs. I mean, that's brilliant. I wish other developers would do the same. But, you know, I think that's fantastic. I'd love to see solar cells. I do think it is a tough development for those people around. I think that goes without saying. Um, I, you have to weigh these things up. Um, I'm in two minds, but I think, having thought about it and seeing the developer has done so much here, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a mind to, to approve it, I have to say. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much, members. If I, if I could ask you, please keep your reactions, because we've got other members that are speaking. Thank you. Councillor Kirk. Thank you, Chair. Chair and members of the Planning Committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this matter. I've been asked by several Bullbrook residents to confirm their support for the application, of which I'll detail in a moment. Beforehand, I acknowledge that any application will fail if it offends planning considerations only. Furthermore, I note the recommendation of the Planning Officer, Joe Mayle, is that planning permission be granted subject to the completion of Section 106 legal agreement and the considerations in section 11 of the source report. Firstly, Dr. Stephen Wells of Charnwood Largest Lane, Bracknell, proximate to the proposed site, originally opposed the application but is now fully supportive, primarily on the following grounds. A reduction in the number of apartments and a reduced profile of building C, nearest to his abode, from five to three floors. These outcomes have been complemented by regular dialogue between residents and the applicant. Secondly, Gisela Brownscum of For the Cops Largest Lane is supportive of the application, citing the applicant's positive efforts to meet the demands and suggestions of neighbours, the reduction in number of apartments, modifications of building height, increased parking and the facility for electric vehicles. Thirdly, Dr John Brownscum of For the Cops Largest Lane is supportive of the application, citing well-informed dialogue between the residents and the applicant and considers that this updated application to be a further improvement. He has some suggestions regarding allocated parking spaces and traffic flow that he has sent directly to Joe Mail. Finally, all three residents are of the opinion that this development would be of immense value to the borough. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burke, Kirk, sorry. Uh, Councillor Brossard. <coughs> Ow, ow, ow. Oh, yeah, sorry about yeah, get, getting used to the technology. Um, I actually feel the report has been excellent. It's, taken, it's, it's very reassuring that the case officer has, take, has been mindful of all the comments that were made at the previous meeting, the concern about the number of flats, the concern about the height of Block C, that it's going to be reduced by one level, and that that will also resent in, in, a, in a reduction of nine flats. We've got, as I think Councillor Virgo made reference to, the car club provision, and also the electric charging points, that every single parking place will either have an active parking parking place as a 20%, I understand, and the other 80% will be passive. Um, I thought the site visit was useful. I know that Councillor Birch accompanied us and other members did as well, but it actually gave you an indication of the positioning of the three blocks. I appreciate the block C, as I said, has been reduced in height, and I think that's beneficial to the residents of Robin Gate. Be of Robin's Gate, rather, because it does mean that there is less of a privacy issue than would have been the case before. Um, I think these are, these are difficult decisions that are taken, but on balance, I will be supporting the case officer's recommendation. I think it's a sympathetic scheme, and it's one that I will be supporting. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Cal um, Councillor Mosson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I just want to agree with uh, Councillor Virgo and Councillor Kirk. Oh, you stole my thunder. I was going to mention everybody who was originally objecting but now was supportive of I think the builders have, have worked really hard to try and meet the, the standards we set last time. And I certainly will be voting for this. And I'd encourage everybody else to do too as well, please. Thank you very much. Um, can you say Councillor Bidwell? Councillor Bidwell. Well, was he here for the officer's presentation? Are you asking? Counc Councillor Bidwell, I noticed you've got your hand up to speak, but were you here for the officer's presentation? Because I noticed that you came in late. I did come in late, and no, I didn't. Okay. Um, let me just check. Uh, I, I don't think you can speak if you didn't hear the officer's presentation. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. 
Um, okay, I've got no other, oh, sorry, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I actually got a, a, a representation from a resident who's very concerned about the bulk and uh, height of the buildings within, you know, surrounded by normal housing and some uh, reduced height flats. Um, the existing flats around there and the new ones are um, a much more proportionate to the residential area that originally surrounded it. Um, there's also a concern that, you know, the, the taller flats in, uh, should be along the main roads like uh, London Road and uh, around around the, sorry, um, uh, along the main roads should be where the taller flats are, is the feeling, um, not within the existing residential area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's no other member is saying they wish to speak. I'll come to Councillor, oh sorry, Councillor Angel, and then I'll come to you, Councillor Hayes, as second of the reserving, then I'll sum up. Councillor Angel. Thank you, Chairman. I'll be very brief. Um, just to say, I think this this application is is far superior to the one that we had before us. Um, clearly, people have heard what we had to say. Changes have been made, and I will be supporting this recommendation. And I think it's Sandhurst's gain and Bratnell's loss, frankly, if it goes through. But uh, I think it's well proven. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Ballybo, please. Thank you, Chair, Councillor Ballybo. Uh, actually, I was glad that I, I sent, and I was very quiet today with my questioning because I, I sent a lot of questions to the officers in the morning. And I just want to say thank you to Joe for responding uh, fully. Uh, one of my questions was actually what uh, uh, a fellow councillor actually raised today, uh, I've already spoken about, which was the allocation and the numbers. And I think one of the response I got from the officer was that when we were doing or estimating the allocation, uh, the clever design that was actually submitted with this application was to have the car parking underneath the flats. And when we were doing the approximation at the time with the uh, uh, local plans, uh, that wasn't uh, thought about at all. Uh, I'm grateful that the applicant had actually listened and actually did something uh, because they would have stood to their grounds. Uh, for making the effort to do that, I will be supporting this application because I... <laughs> And the reason, one of the reasons, although this doesn't probably meet our planning uh, or parking standard, is because of the precedence that has been set along that road. And the fact that this building or development is actually at the very end of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is what swayed me uh, to, to, to back this application today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Counts. Right, okay. It's not I'm now going to ask the seconder who reserved her permission to speak, and then I'll sum up. Councillor Mrs Hayes, did you want to Thank say anything? Thank you, sir. Of course. Um, eloquently, as I would have expected, Councillor Birch to state what he thought was against the application. I feel that the case officer, sir, and having listened to other members, have covered the points that we requested, even down to what I know Councillor Virgo and I are very into, and that is the climate change of the building into what should be green and clean for the future. That said, parking standards, I, I think I wasn't quite sure, but I, I wasn't sure whether Councillor Birch had got his figures quite right. I, that is neither here nor there, but I do think when looking at the papers that we did, the, pa the work now does, does cover EN20 and the CS7. Having said that, sir, I could go on, I'm sure, but it's been covered by others, and I would therefore put it to you to speak to it, and that would, I would be, as you say, seconding it that this now be passed. Thank you very much Thank indeed, Councillor Mrs Hayes. Okay. So uh, just to deal with the points that have been raised, um, that there was a very important point made by Councillor Birch about the SALP, the Strategic Allocation Local Plan, 
Um, and, and as Councillor Birch quite rightly knows, then the numbers in the SLP, SALP are indicative um, and not an exact uh, count. Um, so therefore, um, the, the numbers um, on this application against the SALP is, is really not material. Um, so uh, the, we were talking about, some people are talking about overlooking. I mean, the highest building is building C and that's dealt with in the report. The overlooking is dealt with in the report and it does comply with our standards. Um, and the overspill, overspill of parking that people have mentioned, you will see on page 37 of your report that there are quite a few um, surveys that have been done as to the parking demand statements. Um, and this application site does in fact exceed the parking demand statements that have been undertaken by parking surveys. And those parking surveys were not done during the day when a lot of people are at work. They were done at two, three, and four o'clock in the morning when most people are in their beds um, and probably would park their cars. So I think that they are relevant in this case. Um, and therefore I would ask members to support this application as proposed by the officers. Would all those in favor, yeah, uh, the, that will come back, councillor. Yeah, but it will come back because it's a separate part of the application. Oh, okay. All right, all those in favor to approve, please show. And those against, and those abstaining. That motion is carried. I feel like we've just—I feel like we just scored a goal. Um, can I? Can I just say? Can I just please, please, please? I, I realise you're excited. Um, for those of you that will wish to leave, can I, can I ask you to please do so quietly, because we've got a lot more business to get through. And thank you very much for your attendance. Okay, can we uh, can we carry on, please? Thank you. Oh, all right. I'll just wait for you quickly. It is now. Okay, members that are online, as you probably gathered, there were quite a few people in the in the chamber, so we just so we're just letting them go.
Okay, then we'll continue now as Councillor Dr Barnard is back in the chamber. Thank you. Uh, we move on then to the next item on the agenda, which is 186188 High Street. Members, can I just draw your attention that this, this was also the subject to a previous planning committee um, where um, an alternative motion wasn't available. Um, and the officer is just going to... No, no, I've got the wrong one. I've got the wrong one. This is one. Sorry. I've got poor Simon on there saying, what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> All right, let's... Sorry, we just go straight on to 166... 186... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've been made aware. Yeah. All right. We'll get that. All right. Simon, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Simon Roskilly here. I'm the uh, planning officer for this case. I'm just going to share my presentation. Please let me know that you can see that okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right. Um, the application site lies on the western side of Crowthorne High Street within the defined Crowthorne core retail area. This area. Immediately, sorry, immediately to the north of the site is Gilgate House, a part three, part four story building comprising retail uses on the ground floor and 16 apartments above created under a prior approval application. That's this building here. To the south is the two story vacant bank building. Here you go. Uh, the site is also adjacent to the Crowthorn Church Road conservation area, which abuts the site on its northwest facing side boundary to an area of hard standing. This is the conservation area Church Road and it abuts the site here. To the rear and side is a large expanse of largely unused hard standing. An existing access connects the property to Heath Hill Road south to the north of the site. This road also provides access to other neighbouring resident, residential properties, including Gilgate House, a more recent residential development that's recently been built out, retirement flats at Lily Court and GP surgery. This is the access road here. This is Thornley Place up to South, uh, Heath Hill Road South. And you've got Gilgate House. You've got a recently built out development here. This bit here is actually access through Thornley Place, a doctor surgery, and yeah, Lily Court here. As the site is located within the Currythorn Core Retail Area, it is considered sustainable in terms of shops and facilities, as well as public transport links further afield. Planning permission is sought for a three storey building when viewed from High Street, comprising parking, refuge, and cycle storage at low ground, lower ground floor level, two retail units at ground floor level, and eight number one bed flats above with associated parking following demolition of the existing building. The scheme has evolved since the original submission and following proactive discussions between parties has resulted in the submission of amended plans. The bulk and massing of the building has changed from a four storey flat roof building, approximately the same height as the adjoining Gilgate House, to a three storey building with a ridge height and eaves height lower than that of Gilgate House. The number of units has also changed from 12 one bed flats to eight one bed flats. Vehicular access to the site will be shared, sh sorry, off a shared private road northwards onto Heath Hill Road South. On site, a total of 20 parking spaces are to be provided, including residential parking at one space per one bed flat, so eight in total, commercial parking at five spaces uh, per unit, so that's 10 in total, and two visitor parking spaces. I'll just zoom in on this layout plan for you while I'm here, just to show you where the parking is. Hope you can see that. So you've got the residential parking at the back here with the letter R, and then you've got commercial parking here, here, visitor parking here, and some commercial parking here underneath the terrace. I'll just scroll across to show you that this is the lower ground floor level. So this is the refuge storage for the residential scheme. This is the cycle storage for the residential scheme. You've got the cycle storage for the commercial units and the bin storage for the retail units, all access off the back, out the back. Yep, 
you propose elevations, um, you have the view from High Street. So this shows the two shop units here that are accessed through this front door. There's also access then to the flats above, um, and there's also access at the rear to the flats above, but not the, or there is access to the shop units at the back as well, sorry. <laughs> Um, you'll see from the design you have, um, this is the, the drop in height coming down from Gilgate House. You've now got a um, gable features within the eaves. Um, you have lower eaves. So it's, it's, it's more in keeping and more of a transition down from what Gilgate House is at the moment. Um, you have the side elevation here with windows in the side, breaking up that but the bulk and matting of that side elevation. You have the rear elevation, and this is where I said that it was part four story because you have the lower ground floor that you can see from the rear. And in the side elevation, you won't you won't see because that will be actually abutting um, Gilgate House. You've got the floor plans here, so it shows the two retail units on the ground floor, and then you've got the two floors with the one bed units, four on each floor. And just as I was talking about the scheme evolving, I thought I'd just put this plan together to show you that you've got the original submission that came in. And this was the the, the bulky four story building with um, sort of identical height to Gilgate House, sort of not really respecting a transition in height down down towards the bank building. So this is the scheme now um, and you see that you've got a sort of a less bulky roof because you've got the, the, the pitch. You've got the gable features that break it up and also it's lower in height, so it provides a more sympathetic transition. Uh, members are directed to the supplementary report for updates relating to this item, which include a correction to paragraph 6.2, page 553 of the report, changes to the recommendation, including an amended condition and an additional condition. I'll now show you some photos of the site. So this is the first photo. Uh, Heath Hill Road South, looking southeast towards High Street. This is Heath Hill Road uh, South again, looking northwest, and you can actually see the access here to Thornley Place. Again, this is the access to Thornley Place, looking down towards the doctor's surgery. And another uh, Thornley Place uh, view south into the application site. This is the application site beyond, and this is Lily Court. Again, Further on, this is the existing vehicular access to the site. And you can just see here, you've got the bank building here, and this is the uh, single story, sorry, two story building that will be demolished. Uh, I think a lot of people know it as, as Newman's, the uh, shoe shop that's not there anymore. Uh, this is the uh, the actual site itself. So you've got the, this is the uh, buildings to be demolished as, as well as these garages. You can see uh, High Street through here, and you've got the bank building here. These are looking sort of for you looking towards Church Road. You can just see Church Road through here. And this is the properties that front onto Church Road. And these are the properties that sort of that are within Thornley Place. These are relatively new new houses. You've got the rear here of Gilgate House showing the parking. And a side view of Lily Court. And again, just another view of what's existing in the uh, so the housing development at Thornley Place and another view of that <laughs> and uh, i've got a view then going up towards heathfield road south just showing the sort of slope in the land up towards heathfield road south and you've got a high street view here looking south so this is the bank building this is part of the development site that's not actually got a building on the site at the moment and then you'll see that this is the the building that will be demolished and the relationship it has with Gilgate House, and this is Gilgate House at a high street looking north. Uh, to conclude, the proposed layout is considered to provide a suitable balance of built form, hard standing, landscaping and amenity space, including a raised terrace and inset balconies. The proposed bulk, massing and overall architectural design of the building is considered in keeping with the street scene, providing a sympathetic transition from Gilgate House south down the slope of the high street towards the lower two storey vacant bank building. The proposed bulk massing and overall architectural design of the building is not only appropriate when viewed from high street, but is also considered not to affect the setting of Church Road conservation area. Providing retail units at ground floor level retains the current site function and enhances the vitality of the high street, which is what is required within the defined core retail area. 
the proposal would result in no adverse impacts upon the community of both existing and future occupiers. The proposal as a whole will provide, provide on-site parking of 20 spaces. This would result in parking provision being 1.5 spaces short for commercial visitors when assessed against the requirements of the adopted parking standards SPD. The local highway authority are content that as on-site visitor parking for the residential use would exceed the requirement, this could be used by the commercial visitors. Also, a comprehensive parking survey and analysis demonstrating that there is sufficient parking in the vicinity that could be used for additional commercial users if needed was submitted by the applicant. This also helps to address the shortfall. Overall, given the robust evidence submitted as allowed for under the parking standard SPD, the on-site parking provision is considered acceptable in this case. The proposal as a whole is also considered to meet with the, bi with the biodiversity, drainage, Thames Basin Heath SPA mitigation, general infrastructure requirements and re renewable energy policies subject to conditions and suitable obligations secured by way of a Section 106 legal agreement. In light of the above, it is recommended that the Assistant Director of Planning be authorised to approve the application subject to conditions and the completion of a Section 106 legal agreement to secure what is set out in both the committee report and associated supplementary report. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Um, before I open it up to questions from members, just a couple from me. Um, whilst you've got that picture on the screen, or what you oh, have. Oh, sorry. That's all right. That's okay. I'll bring it back. <laughs> um, just the just to indicate that the proposed development is uh, one story lower than that adjacent building. Is that correct? Oh, it's it's. Oh, I can bring up the actual um, transitional plan. Let's have a look. There we go. All right. It, uh, it, it is, but it's, it's, it's the bottom one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of it, it, it's almost um, yeah. with the window heights, but but it but it's it it steps yeah. down. Yes, correct. Okay. And the um, and the reason that this has come to committee is because it's had more than five letters of objection. Um, I'd just like to ask that most of those objections were received before the reduction in height. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Yes. Um, I also note that Crowthorne Parish Council now recommend approval. That's correct, isn't it? That is, yes. So originally they, they objected to the scheme, a recommended refusal um, following the sort of negotiations with the developer and submission of the amended plans. They subsequently were consulted and said that they um, now recommend approval of the scheme. Thank you. Any other questions, members? Councillor Boko. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, could I just repeat this thing? Um, please, about EVs and solar cells, because there's no mention on it, and we are getting to the point now where we should insist on this, actually, on all developments, particularly flat, Simon. I know there's an energy statement, but it's a bit wide of the mark. Uh, I, I think we should be much more specific that we want to see this like the last development. Hey, perhaps I'll come yeah. to Andy, you can deal with the EVs. Yeah, I can we'll respond come. to you on the yeah. yeah. Uh, Andy Wells, Highways Development Management. The um, number of flats proposed doesn't meet the threshold, which is 10 for EV charging as a requirement against our parking standards SPD. However, the building regulations part S infrastructure for electric vehicle charging comes into force in June this year. And that will set a much higher bar in terms of the number of EV charging spaces required, um, likely to require all of the residential spaces and probably commercial spaces on this site um, to have EV charging infrastructure enabled. Obviously, the building regulations isn't something that is a uh, planning matter, but it is something that the building will have to comply with when it is constructed. Um, it seems inconceivable to me, based on a committee date of the 19th of May, that um, they would manage to get all their building regulations submissions in before, I think it's the 22nd of June when this comes into play. So um, I think it's highly likely that EV charging will be required um, just through another mechanism other than planning. Yeah, they'll have to have them. Unless they're building this lightning fast, it's, it's not going to. Councillor Dr Barnard. Oh, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Uh, I'll just, yeah, uh, solar I'll panels. Just, yes, so there, there are two conditions on this application. 
Um, the first being the energy demand assessment that needs to be submitted. That's pretty standard condition. Um, if the information that's submitted is either lacking or is not is not up standard, um, and that will request um, the energy demand assessment to be submitted, of which 10% will have to show that it's the uh, carbon footprint of the building is being is being reduced by 10%, and also that 20% on-site renewables can be provided on the site. Um, and of course, they can be provided in many forms of which they could be uh, uh, solar solar panels or solar thermal. Um, so yeah, that, that will be submitted and be taken into consideration um, at a later date. Councillor Dr Barnard. Thank you, Chair. And if you just make an indulgence on this, um, we, we've had in the past a number of applications where to put additional floors onto, um, you know, developments in, in, in centres and indeed in Crowthorne, we, you know, we've had applications in the past as well. Um, can officers just talk me through the process whereby that could or couldn't happen? Because having visited the site, I think the proposal as is is really good in terms of how it relates to other things. But my concern would be that if an applicant in the future came back to put an additional floor on it, can that be managed by condition to restrict this in the future? What can we do? Because the whole point about this is that the amended scheme is really good in the context of other buildings, but should an additional floor go back on it, we end up in a rather difficult position and we have seen that further down the road so it's, it's just a point of clarification as should the applicant wish to put another floor on this they would have to put in another planning application to achieve okay. it and then if you wish to or any member wish to they could call that planning application to this committee right so there's nothing that kind of restricts that potential on the site no because no because we have in the past you, you don't need no you don't need yeah. it because it's 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 restricted because these are these, if, if this committee passed this planning application this evening, these would then become the approved plans. Any deviation from those approved plans would require um, another planning application. They, they could. They, they could come back to put six on, but whether this committee decides to approve that or not is another matter. Okay. Any other questions? Councillor, Councillor Badibo and then Councillor Brown. Thank you, Simon. Uh, can you bring up the uh, aerial view, the top view of, uh, of, of the site? This one. Uh, is that the site? Yeah. yeah. Or do you want the site the car plan? Parking? Would you like the site plan? No, yeah, please. With the car parking, showing the car parking from the top. Oh, yeah, this is it here, yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you That's just zoom in, I just want to see, in, I couldn't read the text from my diagram. Now I'm wondering yeah. the the fence, the border between the new the plan and the existing building or the yeah. Is that uh, a fence, uh, a high fence? How high is that fence? Between sorry the the Gilgate House or are you talking about the the bank building? No no the sorry, at the back of the building where the car parks oh, yeah. are, where the car parking spaces are. Yeah. There's an entrance into the new application site. Yes. Between the new ap the application site and the existing, is there a fence, or is that just a, a vegetation? I can show you because I think it was picked up in the photos. Um, you can just see here. You go. Yes. That's the fence in question. Can you see that? Will that is that will that remain? That's to be retained. Yes, it's on the plans as retained. Is it possible to actually ask that that be a nice? vegetation to, to I'm just thinking that is a very ugly fence that so it's more like can't change planning permission on the hoof we have to either approve or refuse what's in front of us and what's in front of us is that perimeter remains but we could we could amend or we could make an, no we couldn't do that No, you have to you approve or, or refuse what's in front of you. Sorry, process. Andy. Uh, yeah, yeah I've, sorry, I've, I've lost my screen because I was out of power. But, uh, uh, if I may jump yeah. in there, um, Chair, the uh, plan, if Simon zooms in enough on that text, shows the existing closed board face retained with new landscaping adjacent. Yeah, there's a, that's there's on a, there's a, all there's three a, boundaries with those yeah. fences. So there will be planting in front there will of be planting in front yeah. of it. Oh, okay, uh, can, can we see that? Uh, I'm just thinking. We can't. Uh, well, no, because it's not there, is it? No, no, no. It's no in the, in the, you see the, the drawing. Yeah. You can see it there. It's on the screen. You see the. Okay. 
See that? That seems so to be them. better than what's there now. Line. It will be better than what is there now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Chair. Um, did I miss uh, sprinklers being put in this building? We always miss sprinklers being put in buildings, <laughs> unfortunately. I didn't. I didn't see it. it. I don't think that it's on the plan, is it? I don't think it's on the plans. Is that no. is that not a building building regs issue? Can 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 we? Unfortunately, ask? it's not a planning issue. Yeah. I, I can have a look on the plans, but yeah. I, I don't think we can hold them to if because of the fact that it's a building regulations no. requirement. Well, potentially, well, this this council oh, did sorry. pass a, a motion that um, we could should be seeking sprinklers in buildings where practicable. I mean, there's no harm in us popping an informative on, but that's all uh, really I can do. Okay. That would be good. And any you. mention would be great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any other member wish to ask a question? Anybody online? No. Okay, I'll move the officer's recommendation, which is on page 65, Chairman, and supplementary you. five and six. Okay, on page 65, supplementary five and six. Do I have a seconder? I'm happy to second it, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I don't think I need to add anything to start you off, but does any member wish to speak? Okay, there's no, nobody's wish to speak. I'm, oh, sorry, Councillor Ballybo. Uh, thank you. Um, this is. Uh, Looking at a picture of the, uh, the the front of the current site, there is a bench on, on the street. And uh, I know this is not a planning material or anything like that, but I would just like to take this opportunity to actually say something about the need for benches around the street. My, my well, mom it's not really relevant to this planning application. But the bench is going. It's going to go the bench. Well, if, if you can be brief, then I'll, I'll allow okay, it. Okay, don't worry. I, it's okay. I, I, I just wanted to mention, you know, for, uh, but, you know, I, I do have a lot of experience with my mom, uh, you know, not being able to walk properly. And uh, I know, but it, it's just the importance of having benches on ice cream for people to rest. It's, it's very important. That's all. Thank you. Second, yeah. do you wish to speak? Yes, uh, briefly, Chairman. Um, Really just to say that I, I think this is an excellent scheme. I'm very pleased that uh, the uh, Crowthorne Councillor, Tina Mackenzie Boyle, had engaged with the um, applicant and also with the case officer in terms of securing an alternative to the original specification in terms of the height. I think that's very important because had it been allowed to be submitted on the original height, there is a building next door which currently Barclays Bank is redundant. And of course there is the risk, we talk about precedence and it would be much more difficult then to defend uh, no alternative scheme or proposal for the Barclays Bank which would then mirror the existing one. And I actually believe that the concerns of the residents have been addressed, I think, through the engagement of the local councillor, through the negotiations with the case officer, and I actually think this is an excellent scheme, and I will be supporting it. Yours. No, that's 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 mine. That's the supplementary, and that's your. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Well, as nobody's spoken against this, can I just put it to the vote? All those in favour to approve, please show. That's unanimous, I believe. Thank you very much, members. We move then to agenda item seven, which is Abbey House, Grenfell Place. Um, and I'm now going to say what I was going to say before, insofar that, um, it, that previously this was determined and uh, recommended for refusal by the planning committee. However, to comply with our rules and regulations, we're just going to have a brief overview from the officer as to the application that we previously um, considered. Um, and then go straight to an alternative motion unless you wish to do otherwise. So, Katie. Thank you, Chair. Katie Andrews, Planning Officer. I just share my screen. Can I confirm my screen can be seen? Yes, we can see it. It's quite small. If you can make it bigger, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Okay. The application relates to Abbey House for the erection of an additional third floor storey to the existing building 
together with an extension at second floor level to create a further six residential units. Members will recall the application was presented to the last planning committee on the 21st of April, where the offer re officer's recommendation to approve the application fell. The application has been brought back to the planning committee to allow an alternative recommendation to be considered. Members are firstly directed to the yellow sheet for updates on the application. I will just show the plans to remind members of the proposal that was presented and debated at the last committee. The application site is located in the town centre and relates to an existing residential building for 40 flats. The parking for the site lies to the south of the building. The site is surrounded by three Grade 2 listed buildings, Windscar House, the Old Manor Public House and the Holy Trinity Church. The ringway lies to the west of the site, along here, and Church Road to the east of the site. The existing parking at the site provides 37 parking spaces with 29 parking spaces for the existing residential development shown in purple and a further eight parking spaces allocated for the Holy Trinity Church shown in red. Access to the site is via the ring. The parking and access remain unchanged under this application. The plans on the screen show the existing front elevation, the existing rear elevation, the existing side elevation, and further side elevation looking towards the town centre. The plans now on the screen show the proposed front elevation with the extension at the third floor level constructed using a grey metallic seam structure and windows lined up on the elevation. The rear elevation follows the same design and then the extension over the existing bin store in this location. I'll just quickly run through the and the side elevation looking from the ring and then from Church Road and the town centre. I'll just show the elevations, sorry, the floor plans with the existing bike store in this location at the ground floor. The first floor plan showing a new bike store in this location and bin store here to serve the whole development. The second floor plan which shows the one bed flat above the existing bin store. And then the third floor showing the new flats with the one bed flat in this location and the remaining four flats to be two bedrooms. Thank you. Members will now need to consider an alternative motion. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, do you wish to ask a question? Um, I just want to this, this, this relates to sort of the legal things. So the, the question I have is I, I have had sight of a document that indicates you know, lettings that might or might not relate to some of these flats in advance of this meeting. Is that a material consideration in my participation in the debate or discussion? It is not being promoted by the council. Um, I don't believe so. Uh, Rachel, you're on here from our legal team. Um, I don't think that that precludes no. Councillor Barnard from taking part, does it? Um, no, I don't believe so. Thank you. Chair. I just wanted to clarify that, Chair. I think it's important. So you have our legal advice. That's fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Members, as I said, uh, this application was considered at a previous council, uh, previous planning committee meeting. Um, and, and as there is no changes to this uh, application from what was previously considered, and that was a physical meeting, 
that decision to refuse stands. So what you now have is to have to now have a look and decide on an alternative motion, which I understand, Councillor Balibo, you have an alternative motion, is that correct? Uh, yes, Chair. Thank you. Could you uh, propose your alternative motion? Do we have a paper copy of it? Or do we have it online? I can share my screen. Thank you. Can we share the screen? Thank you. I would like to propose my alternative well, can motion. Can we just let, let the members have a look at it first? And Can you not? Yeah, I, I, well, you need to, no, I can't, I can email it, but you need to consider it now. I, I'll tell you what I'll do, if you want, is is I can read it for you. And, yeah. Okay. Um, so that this is for the erection of additional third floor to Abbey House and Councillor Badibo's uh, recommendation or his, his motion is that having read the officer report and heard the debate previously, I am not persuaded by the issues and arguments raised against this, uh, uh, raised against this proposal and therefore suggest the following alternative motion to refuse that the development fails to make adequate provision for the parking of vehicles in accordance with the council's adopted parking standards and the local planning authority is not persuaded by the submitted evidence that a relaxation of these standards will not lead to on-site congestion and displacement of vehicles into surrounding roads, increasing the risk of illegal, inconsiderate and obstructive parking, which would in turn have an adverse effect on the free flow of traffic and highway safety. As a result, the proposed development is contrary to policies M5, no, sorry, M9 of the Bracknell Forest Local Plan and Parking Standards SBD. The occupants of development will put extra pressure on the Thames Basin Heath Special Protection Area. You've read that once many, many times before. Do you want me to read that? It's as, as a standard. Um, the important part is the first part of that. So, so uh, that's been seconded by Councillor Birch. Does anybody wish to speak? Does a seconder wish to speak? Well, you're, you're, nobody else has asked. No, nobody's online, so. Um, I think the um, application uh, is wholly inappropriate for the location. And uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, 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 an overdevelopment uh, condition perhaps, but uh, I think the parking is uh, a sufficiently strong, although I've seen a letter uh, uh, today with the supplementary. Uh, uh, but um, I think um, uh, the uh, thoughts of members from the last meeting totally support. C Councillor Birch, I must apologise to you that I missed a hand online to speak. Um, I, I, will, I will come to them and allow them to speak. And if there is anything that you wish to add, I will come back to you. Uh, Councillor Bidwell, you, you asked to speak. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I spoke uh, at the, uh, the last time this application came up and I was uh, in favour of it. My question about the parking seems to be the biggest obstacle is that um, there are many uh, apartment buildings around that location, not least the recent one above the railway station. And I assume that doesn't have any parking allocated to it whatsoever, unless residents have to pay for it across the road in the in the station car park so the need for housing as far as i'm concerned outweighs the consideration for parking and anybody that is going to move into that uh, uh, location will know the restrictions before they agree to rent it so um, i can't understand why many members are objecting to this i think it's a pretty a storm in a teacup to be honest 
and I would, uh, if I was there, I would uh, certainly support the original motion. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Barnard, you said you wanted to speak. No, I will only allow Councillor Barnard to speak, and I will now go back to the seconder for a continuation because he has the right for that. And then I'll come to you, Councillor Dudibo, for you to sum up as the as the mover of the motion. Councillor Dr Barnard. Yeah, I, I did just wanted to say that um, I don't recognise a storm in a teacup as a planning consideration. Um, my, my real concern is, as we discussed and debated in the first application this evening, the balance between parking and residential development is absolutely key and critical to actually the amenity of the surrounding residents. And I think it's a very, very difficult um, argument to constantly continuously have that housing outweighs the need to balance the amenity. I think this application has been carefully considered by members before, and we have a motion tonight that regularises the sentiments and the discussion and the decision which members took last time, which is on this occasion, that the harm caused by the addition of the additional housing linked to the parking as set out in the motion for refusal, you know, the alternative motion, <coughs> is absolutely key. And I think we have to always maintain, colleagues, that careful balance, even in town centre locations, because just because one building has it doesn't mean it works in every location. And I'm sure colleagues, when they viewed the uh, site in question, will have seen how that constraint in this place plays out, and it is different and unique to each application. And right since I joined this committee a number of years ago, I was always taught that you had to treat each and every application on its merit, which is why this motion before us this evening, I think, solidifies the balance and discussion that we had as a planning committee last time. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Birch, as the original second, I'll, I will break protocol here and come back to you, but I could ask you to please to be very brief. Yeah, two, two things, and I, I, I was shocked, I think is the right word, to hear the words, need for housing outweighs the need for parking. Uh, that, that, that troubles me, uh, uh, because we absolutely must consider the amenity of everyone and the safety, safety of other one. We have parking standards to make sure people are safe in and around moving traffic. So, uh, uh, and that is a principal concern uh, uh, with it. Uh, and my comments are within policy context and I'd like people uh, to uh, consider it specifically within the policy context and also its proximity to a listed building. There Thank you very much indeed, yeah. Councillor. Uh, as the mover of the motion, Councillor Dadibo, did you want to sum up or did you want to put it to the vote? Uh, I just like to sum up really. I, I think uh, I'm grateful that my fellow councillor, uh, they've actually looked at this, listened and read the officers' reports and came to the conclusion, I think, almost unanimously. Uh, that the importance of parking in this particular, with this particular application is so, so important. And I have to, I refer people back to the national policy framework, paragraph 108. Parking is not just about safety. It actually states here, in town centers, local authorities should seek to improve the quality of parking so that it is convenient, safe, and secure. We cannot overlook convenience. Mm. And just, uh, I think I was really shocked with what uh, Councillor Bidwell said. Uh, oh, that housing outweighs parking. Uh, that's, that's just so wrong. Uh, we have to protect our residents today and the future because they will move into the town. We have to, and, and most of the things that people complain about when it comes to planning is facilities mm. or lack of it. Mm amenities and everything else. So I would like to uh, everybody to support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favour to approve, to uh, support the motion, please show. Uh, and those against? The motion is carried, thank you. We move on then to agenda item eight, which is land to the rear of 78 College. No, I've done that one, haven't I? No, no, no. Land to the rear of uh, College Road, Sandhurst, Berkshire, yeah. yeah, which we went on a site visit. And that's Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Chairman. I'll just share my screen. Please let me know if you can't see it. I'll just start sharing now.
This is an application. Not, not yet. Can't see it. Sorry. No, not yet. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Please just let me know when it comes up. It should. Yeah. Okay. Soon. We have a black screen at the moment. I think it's thinking about. Ah, there we go. Well done. Okay. Yeah. 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 It was a I bit can't, delayed. On I my can't end. now let you know. I can't see it because I can. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is an application for the erection of a pair of semi-detached dwellings in the garden to the rear of 78 College Road. Access is proposed onto the breach of residential street and the application site can be seen here. Here we have the site location plan submitted with the application. And this is the block plan. This shows the layout of the pair of semi-detached dwellings, the access onto the breach, and the tandem parking spaces for the two dwellings. You can also see the protected tree within the front garden of the site, the proposed front garden. Here we have floor plans of the proposed dwellings. We can see they are both three bedroom dwellings with loft spaces. In order to prevent the use of the loft space as a fourth bedroom, conditions have been recommended restricting the installation of any windows to this list loft space. You can find this condition on the supplementary report. These are the elevation drawings of the proposed dwellings. You can see the front elevations have bay windows and the rear elevation has a projecting gable element. You can also see the relationship to number six, the breach, to the right on this screen. Moving on to the photographs, we here have a view looking down the breach with the application site to the left, this uh, well, uh, landscaped area, well not landscaped, uh, greenery, the green greenery. And here we have the view looking in the other direction with the application site to the right behind the fence. The fence will be removed and a new access will be created. This is a view from further along the breach looking towards the application site, which is at the end of this view. And here is a view looking straight onto the application site where you can see the fence. This is a view within the application site. You can see levels have been changed. There has been an increase in level in the centre. And here is a view from the application site towards the breach where the fence will be removed. And another view from further into the site where you can see the gate, the, the fence, which will be removed as well. Here are some examples of dwellings within the breach. You can see they follow a, a similar pattern of development. And here are further examples of the street scene for context. Returning to the block plan, I'll discuss the proposal. The application site is located within the defined settlement boundary. As such, development is acceptable in principle. In terms of the design, pairs, a pair of semi-detached dwellings can be found within the breach and therefore this scheme is not considered incongruous. The scale of the development is considered suitable in terms of height and width in relation to the neighbouring dwellings and the design is considered complementary. It's recommended that conditions are imposed requiring suitable material schemes to be provided, illustrating that the materials will be sympathetic to the surrounding area. The parking is located to the front of the dwelling and landscaping is also proposed to the front, which will be required in a landscaping scheme to be submitted by condition. The protected trees surrounding the site will be secured by condition also to be protected and are not proposed to be removed. Bin and bike storage is proposed to be secured by condition. There is sufficient access for, for, by both dwellings to their rear gardens and therefore bin and bike storage can be provided there or in a suitable location to the front to be determined by condition. In terms of the residential amenities, 
The application site is sited sufficiently distant from the surrounding dwellings to avoid unduly overbearing impacts. Subject to the conditions set out in the uh, committee report and supplementary report, restricting high level windows on the uh, second floor and above and first floor on the side, it's not considered the scheme would be result in unacceptable overlooking impacts. A loss of light assessment has been undertaken uh, and it has been determined that the impact on the, of the development on the surrounding neighbours would be compliant with our guidance and therefore no significant overshadowing or loss of light is likely to occur. In terms of highways considerations, each dwelling is three bedrooms and therefore requires two parking spaces. As such, four parking space, spaces in total are proposed in compliance with our planning policies. As the, the loft is restricted to not be converted, additional parking demand is not required. The access construction is to be conditioned and our highways officer is satisfied that the scheme will provide safe and suitable access. As I said, the protected trees in the surrounding area will be adequately protected and our tree officer is satisfied with the proposed scheme tree protection details to be secured by condition. Our biodiversity officer has reviewed the site and is satisfied the scheme will not have a significant impact on protected wildlife. Biodiversity enhancement scheme is also secured by condition. In terms of drainage, the site is not in proximity to any watercourses and an area and is in an area identified as a low flood risk. As such, the scheme is not considered to have any significant drainage implications. Given the above, the scheme is recommended for conditional approval, subject to conditions set out in the committee agenda and the supplementary report, and subject to the completion of a Section 106 legal agreement to secure mitigation against the impact on the Thames Basin Heath Special Protection Area. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Olivia. Members, do you have any questions? Councillor Dr Barnard. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I couldn't attend the, the site visit, but I did go and look at the site. And my question relates to 9.8, which is about the size of the building in relation to others. My question is that although in relation to the nearest building, it's slightly bigger, my gut feeling is that the kind of roof area means it will look bigger and have greater impact than other surrounding areas. I've seen this happen in Warfield, you know, when newer buildings are next to old ones. In your opinion, does the fact that it is set back further than some of the other properties actually mitigate and minimise that size difference so essentially it will fit within that character because just on its own if it was in the same position as the others it would materially I think look reasonably dominating um, I'm not an expert at this but you, you know your so, thoughts so your helpful. question is because it's set back will it minimise will it actually the bulk then kind of blend into a greater extent Olivia? yes I, I do agree there is a significant setback which will minimise the impact of the development my view is that it wouldn't appear uh, uh, severely yeah. prominent or incongruous now. Yeah. being close to the moment. That, That's very helpful. Thank you for clarification. Thank you, Vice Chair. Yeah, thank you much. Olivia, can you bring up the plan that we saw, please? Yeah. It's a point of clarification, maybe. And I appreciate that Jan is not with us, but no I problem. believe you've had discussions with him. Looking at T T1, which is the one that has the protection, in terms of the protection, I my concern would be that if the front car on the left, so to speak, in, didn't want to sort of get the second car to reverse out onto the road. What would then stop them actually doing a three-point turn and then exiting in a forward gear? Is the tree itself, when you talk about protection, will there actually be some sort, of, not just screening, but actually some sort of fencing that will protect it from the risk of someone actually doing a three-point turn? I'm just checking through the condition now. Um, the uh, land that is not um, uh, parking will be secured as soft landscaping. Um, so, it, and it could, could not the the parking space could not be extended. So they would be reversing into a grassed area or a planting bed. We can, um, when the soft landscaping scheme is submitted, <clears throat> be more specific about wanting, for example, a planting bed uh, alongside the um, uh, parking spaces to limit yes, I would. Yes. The, the, those yes. chances. Yeah, yeah. Very much so. 
Okay, oh, so uh, Olivia, can I ask that when the soft landscaping scheme yeah. comes in, could you please make sure that the vice chair and the ward councillors get to see it, please? Absolutely, no problem. Okay, mm -hmm. Councillor Ballybo, you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, just clarification on the condition of no windows in the loft. Now, this condition, is that permanent or is this some... It is per so they cannot come All back conditions with are always permanent and do not have an expiry date. That's right. Okay, just for clarification, can of they course. come back with a plan to turn that into... Yes, of course. Yes, but we it, it would have to be considered by the, the local authority. Um, and we would make a decision on that. So potentially if they could provide another space or, you know, conditions change. But if they came in with that application now, we would say no. Okay, okay sorry. If that is the you have another question. Yeah, I'm just trying to, if it's not permanent and it's not part of that. No, it is permanent. Okay. Can I just clarify for all members? Conditions do not have an expiry date. And the only way to overcome a condition is for an application, a planning application, to come before this planning authority to overcome or amend a condition. That condition will be there in a hundred years. All right. However, there is nothing to stop anybody anywhere coming to this planning authority asking to do something. And we would consider it. And of course, as members, if that planning application came before you, you're quite in your rights with a planning reason to call it to this committee. Any other questions? Anything online? No, nothing. No. Okay. Okay, in that case, I will move the recommendation, which is on page, page 96, and, 96 the and, the and the supplementary, which includes the condition for no windows, in the in in the second floor in the roof and no side facing windows on the first floor do i have a seconder please thank you councillor virgo um does any member wish to speak no does seconder wish to speak no okay no one's spoken so i'll just put it to the vote all those in favor to approve please show that's unanimous thank you very much indeed members all right, we move on then to uh, agenda item nine, which is land north of Tilehurst Lane, which is Joe. Thank you, Chair. I'll just share my screen, which hopefully you can see now. If, you, if anyone were of making it slightly larger, that would be useful. Thank you. A bit more. better just try a little bit like that's fantastic thank you joe okay this application has been presented to the planning committee due to the number of objections received the application relates to a site located on the northern side of Talhurst lane at its western end and lies opposite existing residential development in pound place which is here and coot close which is here The site comprises three undeveloped fields and sits on ground which rises east to west. To the northeast of the site lies the Grade 2 star listed Binfield Park and to its east lies the Grade 2 listed South Lodge and the original gate piers to Binfield Park which are also Grade 2 listed. And this plan shows the context of the site with these listed buildings. This is Binfield Park here and South Lodge is this one here with the, the listed gate piers here. In 2019, outline planning permission was allowed on appeal for 40 dwellings, including 10 affordable units and the provision of an area of public open space known as the Heritage Park. Details of the Heritage Park have already been approved pursuant to a condition on the outline. The details are shown here. The issue of access was determined at outline stage and approved a central vehicular access um, into the site approximately 20 metres south of Pound Place and two pedestrian accesses onto Tilehurst Lane shown in this position here and this position here. This is a reserved matters application that submits details of scale, layout, external appearance and landscaping for the development. 
other issues such as drainage, tree protection, biodiversity, site organisation and water efficiency are covered by conditions on the outline planning permission. The Reserve Matters proposes 40 dwellings comprising 11 two-bed, 12 three-bed and seven four-bedroom houses together with five flats which would be provided in a small apartment block at the eastern end of the site in this area here. All development would be two-storey in height which is considered appropriate to the character of the local area. Ten units of affordable accommodation have previously been secured by the Section 106 agreement signed in respect to the appeal application and the mix and location of the affordable dwellings is considered satisfactory by the Council's Housing Enabling Officer. The proposed layout broadly reflects that of the indicative layout considered by the Inspector at Appeal, which is shown here. Although it has been amended since its original submission to achieve a more informal layout using shared surfaces, which allow additional planting within the street scene and a more informal layout appropriate to the site's semi-rural location, so it has the central access point here and these areas here are shared surfaces here and here, which, as you see, will allow uh, planting within the street scene. It shows a pedestrian footway across the frontage of the site, providing linkages to Tilehurst Lane at the approved access points here and here. And links through to the Heritage Park and the dwellings are now shown orientated towards this footpath in order to provide surveillance over it. The relocation of the development away from the site's southeastern corner in this area here is considered to improve the setting of the listed South Lodge when compared with the indicative layout. The design of the proposed dwellings is traditional and is considered to be appropriate to the character of the area. They are well detailed using porches, chimneys and brickwork detailing and details of the materials will be secured by condition. I'm going to show you some examples of the dwellings now. So this is an example of a detached unit on plot one in the northwest corner of the site adjacent to the Heritage Park. This is plots eight and nine, a pair of semis at the front of the site looking over the pedestrian footway. This is plots 19 to 21, um, a terrace of three dwellings facing the eastern boundary of the site. This is plots 24 and 25, a pair of semis within the site. Uh, plots 31 to 33, a terrace of dwellings again within the site. And this is plots 34 to 40, the apartment block at the eastern end of the site, which will provide some of the affordable housing. A comprehensive landscaping scheme has been submitted for the site. This has recently been revised to, re to replace previously proposed ornamental species with native planting more appropriate to the semi-rural character of the area. The landscape officer's comments on these revised plans are referred to within the supplementary report. The boundary screening along the site's frontage is to be retained other than where its removal is required in order to facilitate provision of the vehicular and pedestrian access points. Measures for its protection have been approved pursuant to a condition on the original outline permission. And I'll now show you a few photos of the site. So this shows the Tilehurst Lane boundary of the site looking north with the access to Pound Place on the left hand side here. This is a view looking south from Pound Place and shows the approximate position of the access, which would be in here. This shows the position of the access with the tree on the left um, to be removed, and that was approved at outline stage. And the arrow shows a position of a bird scarer within the site, and it's identified so that you'll be able to um, look at the find the um, point of the access point from within the site on a later photo. This is a view from within the site to the eastern boundary showing the listed South Lodge and the adjacent cattery. This is a view looking up the northern boundary of the site and shows the mature trees that uh, screen Binfield Park beyond and which are located located outside the site. This is a view of the western boundary towards the Heritage Park, which is in this area and beyond. This is a photo showing the Tilehurst Lane boundary, and this shows the bird scarer, so it indicates the approximate position of the access from within the site. And this final photograph shows the, the remainder of the site's southern boundary with Tilehurst Lane.
In conclusion, the principle of development of the site for 40 units was established on appeal. This reserve matters application submits details of the scale, layout, external appearance and landscaping of the proposed development. These details are considered acceptable and proposes a form of development which responds to the semi-rural character of the area, so the recommendation is for approval subject to the amendments to the proposed conditions set out on the supplementary report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Joe. Members, can I just remind you that this um, application, outline application, was originally refused by this planning authority um, and it was um, approved on appeal. Um, and so the only thing that we can consider this evening, and you must restrict your questions to, are the details of appearance, landscaping, layout and scale relating to the 40 dwellings. Um, access and all other matters have already been passed as part of the outline planning permission. Um, so that is not something under consideration this evening. So you have to restrict your questions and your debate to those issues. Councillor Dr Barnard. I, I might fail at the first hurdle, but if I do, beg my indulgence. So my question is about how the current layout of the site relates to the lighting requirements. Because we had an application last time which resulted in some pretty ugly and quite intrusive um, lighting columns on the roads which were anything but bat and animal friendly. And hear me out of this because the issue was that the layout required them to make this work in highway safety. So my question is, has consideration been given when considering that the layout is acceptable, that lighting can be less intrusive, therefore beneficial to wildlife, whilst at the same time providing highway safety by raising it at this point, hopefully ensuring that we have a better outcome than we did on the other one where we were to a great extent fettered. So that's Chair an acceptable question. Yes, I think it is. Yeah, Ooh. Joe. There we go. Yes, the condition is obviously on the outline permission. So lighting hasn't been specifically submitted as part of this um, and uh, hasn't been formally considered in any way. The highways um, officer was obviously consulted as part of this application and uh, and has considered um, the relationship between the adoptable part of the highway and the um, the shared surfaces. And as we discovered as part of the previous application, it was the um, the it was the adoptable part of the highway that required the standard lighting and not the elements that wouldn't be adopted, which would be the shared surfaces. So by increasing the level of shared surfaces within this development, it therefore uh, means that we would have less of the to standard lighting required on site. Well, so just you want to come back. I, I to think, I think yeah, I, I think, Chair, the answer is a kind of sort of maybe yes. Um, but in terms of the adoptable highway there, just focusing on that bit, as a consequence of the current design and layout, will that mean that we can have a less intrusive standard lighting rig for an adoptable highway than we did last time? Yes, this because is really there's key less adoptable highway. Yeah. So the actual, f so the form can be considered as part of the onward development to try and minimise the impact on uh, uh, the bats Joe, do we have a do we have um, any kind of um, <laughs> plan before us that shows the the lighting, uh, or is that no. something that will come later? That would be submitted pursuant to the condition on the original appeal decision. Um, the the answer, I think, to Councillor Dr Barnard's question is the fact that there would it would still have to be as as our um, our standards suggest at the moment it would still be on the adoptable area a similar form of scheme as was considered on the previous scheme down at the other end of Tilehurst Lane. Okay, but the the lighting that is not adoptable um, then there can be some uh, restrictions as to you know harmful to bats and other wildlife is that right yes i mean all the lighting whether or not it's on the adoptable highway or isn't takes into account its impact on biodiversity which obviously includes bats uh, but yes you're correct in terms of because they're shared surfaces on the other scheme within Tilehurst Lane we did achieve bollard lighting on those areas that weren't to be adopted. I would love to see it chair. At the okay uh, can, I, can I ask that when the when the lighting plan comes in that you share that lighting plan with Councillor Dr Barnard and the ward councillors please. I, I, I just said 
I just said on the and the ward councillors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, members? Yes, Councillor Virgo, then Councillor Bandar. Um, Mr. Chairman, thanks. Um, it's already probably for Andy actually, but because the EVs are on the layout of of the site, uh, are we in the same position? whereby um, the regulations were tougher than our policies and they will have to be obeyed. Through, through you, Chairman, it's actually James. It's, this one's me, Councillor. Um, can you hear me all okay? Yes, thank you, James. Right, I'll put my camera on as well. Hopefully you can see me as well. So apologies. Um, I believe, I don't know if um, Joe has the plan to show you, but I think the answer to your question is yes. I think all um, properties do have an electric vehicle charging point indicated uh, on the plan that's provided for the for the site and the same building regulations would apply um if, if they you know if they complied with the building regulations um time limits that andy was talking about earlier okay thank you very much in james uh, councillor bandari or should i say mr mayor <laughs> <laughs> thank you so oh, much yeah. thank you so much chair um and this is councillor ankush bandari and thank you joe for sharing the details um, my question, can I refer you to 9.36, where if we look at the second paragraph, I'll just allow a minute for Joe to get to the relevant point. Yeah, so the second paragraph says, conditions of the appeal decision require the submission of a detailed drainage scheme in accordance with the agreed drainage strategy, details of off-site works and connections and requiring a verification report relating to the design and construction of any such feature. So I notice in 9.37, it says that something has been submitted. However, I have not seen any consultation with Thames Water, given that you know we have spent a lot of time in the past few uh, planning meetings going over application 21 oblique 00141, which was on the same location and, and, and with the concerns. So, so, so I have two questions. First of all, do we have a consultation with Thames Water on this? We, as you correctly say, and as it's referred to in the report, we have had the application submitted. I haven't got the details in front of me as to whether or not we've had a response from Thames Water on that conditions application. Um, I'm certainly happy to check that out. Um, obviously, that's not to be considered tonight. It's a separate application. Um, and sorry, what was your second question? So the second question I'm coming to and chair, it oh, might be a question for legal. Because given that we already have an application which was has been refused twice on this same location on drainage grounds, and and sort of you know there are concerns which are already there, you know I mean it doesn't feel right that we should be approving this. Yeah, legal. I understand that was that not part of the um, the appeal application that was success the successful? Joe, could you answer that? Yes, so the as part of the appeal, um, details of a drainage strategy were submitted and were considered by the inspector. And as a result of that consideration, when she allowed the appeal, she put drainage conditions on the appeal permission. And we now have an application submitting details pursuant to those conditions. And what they basically say is that they accept this strategy that has been submitted, but they want a details of the scheme that comply with that strategy. And it's that that we're considering at the moment. Uh, we obviously have consulted the drainage consultant, and he has confirmed that the, uh, that the proposed details are um, appropriate and that the layout that is now being considered by the committee um, would not be required to change in order to for those drainage details to be approved. So just to clarify and to put it into words that even I can understand, the, the appeal decision um, actually outlined a drainage, drainage strategy and our drainage consultant has confirmed that the drainage strategy that the applicant has put forward complies with the, the appeal decision. Is that right? Yes, that's right. We're looking at the very sort of um, a, a detailed assessment of it, and which is why that uh, application has yet to be determined. But the drain in relation to this application, the drainage consultant has confirmed that the layout doesn't inhibit the implementation of the drainage strategy as was um, submitted and 
you lost your inspector. submission committed to appeal. Yeah. Did you have another question, Councillor? Uh, it might come under debate because you know I think there are some inconsistencies uh, okay. there, well, so it might be in, in right. debate. That will so go. debate then. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions, members? Okay, then I'm going to move the recommendation, which is on page... Page 119, Chairman, and the supplementary on pages 10 to 12. Thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? I'm Councillor, Councillor Mrs Hayes. Uh, Mr Hayes seconded? Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. Okay. Uh, members, as I, as I said to you at the outset of this, um, this application, this application is a reserved matters application, um, and as such, the only details is appearance, landscaping, layout and scale relating to the erection of 40 dwellings. 40 dwellings is already in, in stone. Um, and, um, and the 10 affordable dwellings has also been applied as part of this application. And those affordable dwellings, the mix of those affordable dwellings is acceptable to our officer which means they're not all one bedroom flats. There is a mix of houses um, and apartments, um, which is only right and proper. Um, the parking, landscaping, um, and a drainage attenuation features um, has already been approved as part of this. Um, and we heard from the officer that the appeal inspector actually considered the drainage strategy put forward by the applicant um, and the drainage strategy that has been put forward according to our drainage consultant complies with that appeal decision. Um, does Seconder wish to speak? I have Sorry? You, 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 well, yeah, but you're Seconder, so you, get, you can reserve. Okay, okay. Uh, Councillor Bandari. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, can I just humbly beg to differ slightly on what I am reading here? Because I'll go back to point 9.36, which says that conditions of the appeal decision require the submission of a detailed drainage scheme in accordance with agreed drainage strategy. So there is a top line outline strategy potentially that would have been discussed at the appeal stage. But I don't think looking reading uh, here that the appeal inspector was convinced that the detail was what would comply and hence a condition was put for that detailed um, uh, plan to be put forward. And that is where I bring application 21 oblique 00141, which is the separate application, which should have been referred here. I'm not sure why it has not been referred here, because it is the same location. And there are the same concerns that when we delved into the details of that during debate on that one, you know, the, the, the committee was not convinced that the plan was robust enough. and and in that the Thames water thing was discussed to a certain extent here, we don't even have that detail. And, and given the concerns that have been raised by residents previously and the risk of flooding in this area, unless we have those right details, I don't think we should be approving this application. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is any other member wish to speak? Councillor Burgo. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm troubled by this application, to be honest, um, partly because I don't like the designs on it, and um, I know that's not a material uh, consideration, but it certainly doesn't help me. Um, I think they're unimaginative. I think it's in a rural area, and I don't think it's very sensitive to that. I'm troubled by the lighting. I always have been. I made that voice in the last committee. Um, there are many things here. I would have liked to have seen solar cells everywhere, but that's not on it either. Um, <laughs> I have to say, and listening to um, my fellow councillor, um, I think it's absolutely right. I think we should also see uh, Thames Water if they accept it. You know, I, I think it's it's not acceptable if 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 someone from the company suggests something which is very dubable and and somehow we just go with it. Um, so. I, I do think we should dig in on this one myself. Um, anyway, that, that's what that's my feelings. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Dr. Barnard. Did, do you wish to speak? Yeah, thank you. I'll be brief, Chair. My, my concern that arises from this um, is in the detail. But having said that, I, I'm I, I want to put a positive thing forward. I, I think the conversation that I sort of initiated about the lighting, I think, potentially offers good potential for the future, which is. 
the more low level, you know, biodiversity friendly lighting that we can have on a site, the better in a semi rural location. Well, that has to be consistent with the shape and the form of the development. And I absolutely recognise there's their constriction around 40 properties which are on the site and attempts have been made to mitigate the impact of that across the site. But I come back to the core point that, that it would have been nice to see further work done to further um, in, enhance the rural setting. But of course, we have an appeal decision in place that sets in place there needs to be 40 dwellings delivered in what is, by Binfield standards, quite a constricted space anyway. So I think we caught between the rock and the hard place. And I'd be interested in the <coughs> summing up to this um, f for you to really, I think, reflect on the question around the level of detail we can expect. Because from what was said in the debate and discussion based on legal advice and all the other advice we've got is that um, a council entity has, you know, concurred with that decision that was, you know, that information that was put forward as part of the appeal that this is a satisfactory and appropriate way forward. But then we're hearing from others that the level of detail is such that that could still be an impediment. So I would welcome in your summing up um, your view as to where that balance sits in terms of where we proceed with this next. Because as it's reserved matters, my understanding was there should be quite a high level of detail, but I'm happy to be corrected. Councillor Birch. Thank you. It's what I'm one of those classic comments. I wasn't going to speak on it. <laughs> How many times do people say that? Yeah. Uh, I remember speaking out about the drainage on this site the last time round. Uh, but um, uh, there, there is now a plan, strategy, plan, etc. And if the detail isn't uh, uh, appropriate, then uh, I uh, understand that the uh, uh, borough planning officer would not be able to uh, approve until that level of detail satisfied uh, the drainage strategy and the drainage detail. Um, I haven't heard uh, uh, from the Ward Councillor an alternative uh, motion or plan for a, a, a blue sheet or anything uh, and uh, whilst I share uh, uh, Councillor Virgo's discomfiture about the whole site uh, layout biodiversity etc mind you uh, a bit tongue-in-cheek this I'm not sure how rural uh, 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 impact sticking uh, 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 solar panels all over every roof uh, would be viewed but there you are but uh, <laughs> there you go the the drainage thing caused me concern the inspector has said it's got to have a plan and it's got to be done properly uh, and uh, that uh, within the context of the amount that we have to say um, I I unfortunately have to go along with the recommendation in this report. Thank you, Vice Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think it was Councillor Virgo who made reference to the, I think, the street scene. And what I would do is draw members' attention to page 111, where there's actually, I think, a very good illustrative design of the proposed layout against what was indicative previously. Um, it will change the appearance. I think it will change it for the better because it will also provide for some tree uh, screening within the street scene. It's also interesting that, you know, the level of detail that the urban design officer has recommended removal of render, which apparently is not a characteristic in that particular location. So I think all in all, I think it's a balanced report and it's one in which I will be giving my support. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bandari. Thank you, Jack. Um, I just want to check uh, whether it is possible to defer this application, given that what we are talking about is the level of detail which should have been here. So uh, is, if that is a possibility, so that you know, we give a fair chance to the developer to come back with the right level of detail and to the planning officers as well to provide us with the information on what Thames Water is saying. Joe. 
I, I know that we're not in questions, and, and a proposal for deferment has been put forward. Um, can I just ask you, just to clarify, because I think it's the drainage strategy which is causing members' concern, and let me, let me give you what my take on it is, that the drainage was considered at the appeal application and that the planning inspector did consider the drainage, drainage strategy that was put forward and that our drainage consultant, because we are not drainage experts, our drainage consultant has said that the drainage is compliant um, and therefore, if that is the case, there's no reason to defer. However, if that's not the case, I can consider a deferral. Can you just give me some advice, please? Yes, Chair. So the position with it is that the appeal inspector did indeed consider a drainage strategy and, and approved an overarching drainage principles for the site. However, she imposed conditions uh, requiring a detailed drainage scheme to be submitted, and we currently have that scheme, but we haven't yet approved it. So my suggestion, Chair, might be that we could, when we are in a position to actually approve details pursuant to conditions on the outline application, that we bring those to the committee for consideration. And the advice that I've had from the drainage engineer in relation to this application is that having considered the details that have been submitted thus far in relation to the conditions application, he is satisfied that the layout that has been proposed and considered as part of the reserve matters will take into account the drainage, um, the, the layout of, of the, the drainage um, system that is being proposed. But I, I think it, that might be the way forward that we would bring forward the conditions application to the committee I, I think that we should see the application as a whole um, and therefore I would agree with Councillor Bandari's uh, uh, hold on let me finish thank you I will agree with Councillor Bandari's move to defer I think that that's been seconded by Councillor da Dr Barnard all those in favour to defer please show that's carried okay we're going to defer and we need that drainage strategy as part of the application Ch um, Chairman, we, as we get more and more of these types of applications, can I ask that in discussion with officers, you know, to assist things that in future that this becomes the principle under which we operate? Yeah. I mean, it's part of us as members to to pick up these and, yeah. and ask those questions before we bring to... You're absolutely to, right. Yeah. I, I stand appropriately yeah. chastised. Okay, thank you. All right, then we... <laughs> we yeah, we, we'll, we'll move on then to agenda... Thank you, thank you. Yeah, um, members, it's it's quite late, and we've been here for nearly two and a half bit hours. I'm going to um, I'm going to have a five minute adjournment for a comfort break. Thank you.
reconvene now, please. Uh, and we are now on to agenda item 10, which is three Lindos close. And that is being given to us by Shelley. Hello, Shelley. Nice to see you. Hi. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, so I'm Shelley Clark. Um, I'm a, a planning officer. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Uh, so hopefully uh, you can see uh, everything here. So the application. Thank you, Councillor Dudley. Um, the application at three Lindhurst Close. Um, I'm going to um, well, first of all, the proposal is for a front porch, a two storey side extension, a single storey rear extension and a change of use of amenity land. So this application is reported to the planning committee following the receipt of five objections and at the request of councillors Dudley, Terrell and Matic. OK, I'm going to show you the plans and then explain the application and then show you the photographs. Okay, let's do this here. So three Linters Close <clears throat> is a detached dwelling on a corner plot within the settlement boundary. It is an existing four bedroom property with integral garage. Neighbouring properties are number two Linters Close and number four Linters, Linters Close to the rear. Okay, I'm going to move on. So we have the proposed elevations. You can see those there. So the gable design of the extension is not considered to be incongruous with other properties in the street or locality which have similar design features. Um, there are other examples of gables in the area. If I go down to the floor plans, you can obviously see that there. So going down to the floor plans. The extension will incorporate a larger double garage on the ground floor and it will be brought forward from the existing. So it'll be brought forward so that it is in line with the front building line. You can see this here. The highway officer has confirmed that he has no objections subject to conditions retaining the garage the new garage for parking and cycle storage, and there being six metres from the garage door to the highway. A parking plan has been submitted, and you can see here, uh, so a parking plan has been submitted, showing this to be the case, the six metres from the garage door to the highway. The, so the increase in width of the garage will mean that the existing fence I'm doing that here. The existing fence to the side of the property will be relocated 1.5 metres to the east of the application site, effectively incorporating a strip of landscaping, which is currently amenity land. I'm going to take you down to the photos here. So you can see here, so we have the existing garage, the garage is coming forward. And so it's going to meet the front building line. This garage, sorry, this the fence here is being moved to the side by 1.5 metres to incorporate part of this amenity of land um, you, you see here. So the area of land uh, is that we're talking about is approximately 13 square metres. A four metre wide landscaping strip will remain between the new location of the fence and the road. As such, the proposed location of the fence is not considered to have a significant impact on the visual amenity of the area. OK, I will show you that there. So again, you can see the fence. Again, you can see the fence there. And then you, you can see here other examples of gables and gable designs in the area, in the locality. OK, moving down now to neighbouring amenity. In terms of neighbouring amenity, the adjoining neighbour is number two, Lindhurst Close, 
The single storey rear extension will run along the rear elevation and will have a depth of 4.3 metres and a height of 3 metres. At this height, it is not considered detrimental to neighbouring amenity. Now, concerns have been raised by neighbours about land ownership and covenants. However, these are not planning considerations. Please refer to the supplementary report, however, which details concerns by a neighbour and provides a further land registry plan in addition to the land registry plan which has been provided by the applicant. So we now have two land registry plans. OK, um, the applicant I have, uh, has confirmed that there will be no encroachment over the boundary um, from uh, well, including from gutters. OK, so it is therefore recommended uh, to approve the application subject to conditions. Thank you very much. Stop sharing oh, that. sorry. Are you finished? Yeah. Thank yes, you. Now, thank okay, you. So we we'll go you. to questions, and, and I'm going to have the first question. It's a question of clarification mm. for myself and members yes. that land ownership is not a material planning consideration. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. Members, do you have any questions? No questions. Do you have a question or you can have debate? No, I was just going to ask a question about... Um, um, this is Councillor Mrs Matic. Yes, sorry, I'm Councillor uh, Isabel Matic. Thank you for your help today. Um, no, I th I'm concerned about um, how this is going to affect the road ultimately because once one people... It's a very large development and that's what worries me. And once one person's done it, it goes on and spreads and it changes the whole character. So what, what's your question? Well, my, sorry, my question is, um, if we approve that, then it's likely to lead to some more, I suspect, because... Um, no, you take each application on its yes, merits. Yes, I know, yeah, I know, yeah. but it's... You know, you've heard me say it so many it, times. No, OK, fine, thank you, sorry. OK, any other questions, members? OK, as there's no other questions, um, you see uh, the, the application proposal on page 132. Do you do the supplementary on pages 8 and, and 9? And the supplementary on page 8 and, eight and, eight and eight 9. 9. And I think you'll find that that's where we ask for permitted development rights of the garage to be removed, that um, that they cannot um, turn that into habitable accommodation without coming back to us. Can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Birch, thank you. Does any member wish to... Uh, I'm not going to go too much into this because I think the officer's covered it admirably. Um, seconder wish to speak at the moment? Reserve. Reserve. Any other member wish to speak? Can I just give notification that I've, ca I've called for a blue sheet, please? Okay. Right. Okay. Do you want to... Do you want to speak against the application and give us the reasons for it? Shelley, can you put, put the um, motion up, please, the blue sheet? Because I you're not no, proposing. No, no, you're no, not sorry. proposing no, a motion no, at the moment. I, what you're I'm doing you're, is you're in no, debate. So give us I'm your sorry, reasons I'm, I'm why you're not a happy. Good day here. Um, no, I have con very grave concerns about the. It's a very significant increase in the bulk, and that's what I think is is going to impinge. And also, I'm concerned about the fence as well, um, which is going to destroy. Um, some of the um, openness of, of that area as well. So my understanding is no, some comment. Put, no, yeah, put no. word. No, you, you get to speak without comment. That's right. Uh, any other member wish to speak? Does seconder wish to speak? Thank you, uh, Chairman. Having having looked in detail at the plans and uh, uh, the photographs and went on to Google Earth like those photos before. Um, yes, it's a sizable increase, uh, uh, but not the biggest, uh, uh, I would uh, contend. And uh, the uh, fact is that you can put a fence <laughs> properly and legally and within the rules in that area uh, and uh, so 
uh, how much of an adverse impact would it have uh, in, in, that, in the context of the setting of that area, and, it, and it's not a tightly packed uh, uh, development, it, it's quite open with those uh, large type developments with the gable end and so on and so forth. So I would find it very difficult uh, 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 not to support <coughs> your uh, or the officer's recommendation uh, because I cannot see any sound material reasons not to go with uh, the officer's uh, uh, report. Thank you. Thank you. No, he summed up the second half. Oh, no, he didn't sum up. He had. So I now sum up. Um, thank you, Councillor Birch. I, I understand that the ward members' uh, difficulty on this one, and I understand the difficulty of some of the neighbours um, <coughs> when they talk about ownership. And, and, and you saw on the supplementary report there is some contention as to where the actual land registry line is. Um, strangely, this is not a planning consideration. Um, to give you an example, you could, you, you could put a planning permission in to build, build a house in my back garden that you don't own, and planning permission might be given, but of course you wouldn't be able to do it because legally I wouldn't allow you to. So, yeah. so the fact of the matter... The fact of the matter is that just because somebody has planning permission to do something, it doesn't overcome their le people's legal rights of ownership. So it may well be that members may vote to approve this planning application, but if the owner, the developer, does not have the legal right to place a fence, a wall, or whatever, on that piece of land, then they can't put that planning permission into action. It's a strange thing. We always call planning a dark art, don't we? Um, and one of the things that I was concerned about earlier, and the, tra and the traffic officer was also concerned about when I discussed it with him, is the fact that if we hadn't removed permitted development rights to the double garage being enlarged, then that could have been turned into habitable accommodation without coming back to us. And now it can't. And so I'd ask you to support the application as it stands. All those in favour to approve, please show. And those against? No, and one against. The motion is carried. Thank you. We move on then to agenda item 10, which is 37 North Road. Thank you very much indeed. And that's you, Shelley. Right, okay, I will share my screen. This is the one we've been looking forward to all night. Okay, so hopefully uh, you can see my presentation here. Um, so uh, the application at 37 North Road, the uh, proposal is for a loft conversion, including a rear dormer window and two uh, roof lights uh, to the front elevation. There is also um, um, an enlarged side facing window and I do apologize. Uh, the application, uh, the description has now um, removed the part garage conversion. So this is now no longer part of the application. The description has been changed. OK, so this application is uh, reported to the planning committee following the receipt of uh, more than five objections. So 37 North Road is an existing three bedroom property with integral garage within the settlement boundary. It is also within the character study area of Chavy Down East. Neighbouring properties are number 39, the adjacent semi-detached property, and number 35 North Road. OK, I'm going to take you down to the, um, there again on the block plan you can see the neighbouring properties. Um, sorry, um, uh, I'm going to take you down to the proposed um, floor plans and elevations. So since the submission of the application, amended plans have been received and the description of the application has changed to admit the garage conversion and reduce the number of bedrooms to three. The size of the dormer has also been reduced 
and the proposed materials have changed from zinc cladding to slate vertical tile hanging. The roof form will become a gable rather than a hip. Although the hip currently matches the adjoining semi-detached property, in terms of roof forms, there are a variety in North Road, including gables. The dormer follows the design uh, supplementary planning document and it is subordinate to the main roof. It is set and it is set down from the main ridge height. The slate vertical tile hanging is considered in keeping with the property and the area. OK, um, so there you can see the three bedrooms and obviously the garage uh, retained. OK, I'm going to obviously there you can see the front two roof lights um, or the two roof lights on the front elevation and the enlarged side uh, facing window. I'm going to take you down to the photographs now. Oh, so, sorry. So in terms of neighbouring amenity, there is a roof light on the side elevation of number 35 North Road. Due to its positioning, um, in, uh, aligning with the rear elevation of number 37 North Road, so due to its positioning, and the fact that this is a secondary window and not the primary window which faces the garden. Here you can see the primary window. It is not considered that the rear dormer would result in a significant loss of light to this property. The enlarged window on the side elevation or the proposed enlarged window does not face any windows on number 35 North Road and as such is also considered acceptable. Planning con conditions are recommended to restrict windows on either side of the rear dormer to prevent overlooking of neighbouring properties. Right, if I just, you can see the roof light there and obviously you can see the neighbouring property. Now, there is no increase in the number of bedrooms, okay, and therefore no requirement for additional parking spaces. However, due to the size of the existing garage being some substandard in terms of the parking standards, a condition has been requested that restricts the use of the existing garage to parking only. Uh, the additional condition is contained within the supplementary report. It is therefore recommended to approve the application subject to conditions. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. You, you say that condition has been requested. I, it was me that requested it. Has, has that been imposed on the on the proposal that's before us? It's on the, the um, supplementary report. Right, yes. so, so that will be the amended application that members are discussing, yes? Yes. Thank you. Okay, members, questions. Councillor Virgo. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, thanks, Shelley, very much. Um, could I just understand that have the, has the resident already started building without permission? Um, not, not, it's not a planning consideration, I'm sorry, whether it's, whether it's retrospective or before. It's, I guess, what I guess you, not. Is what, what is before you is what you're deciding. Okay. Morally it is, I think. Um, could I also just ask, uh, Shelley, um, just you confirm this, uh, that obviously there's extra rooms here, although they have admitted there's only three bedrooms, but there's nothing to stop them obviously making four or five bedrooms, is there really? There's no planning there's no planning restriction. Uh, it's my understanding that there isn't, no. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you, Shelley, very much. But, I mean, if they don't build the house or the extension in accordance with the approved plans, then they don't have planning permission for it. I, I understand that, but the trouble is we have no regulation to see that that's correct, do we? No, we don't have statutory right of entry, do we? No. no. Okay, any other questions, members? No other questions? Okay, then I'll move the conditional recommendation. Page 141, oh, Councillor Barlow, oh, right. Okay. Page 141 with the supplementary on pages 9 and 10. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Dr. Barnard. Um, okay, we've 
Well, you've seen that, this, that there is, there's quite a lot of work being done on this and, and whether or not I understand, Councillor Virgo, that sometimes um, retrospective applications can be annoying, but as far as our decision making is concerned, it's, it's irrelevant. What we're doing is we're looking at these approved plans, not these, these plans, whether or not you approve them or not. And that is what, that is what we're looking to achieve, if indeed that's the way you vote. Um, and um, there's been quite a lot of movement on this. I've, I've asked for the permitted development rights of the garage to be removed, and that is part of the amended application. Um, and I'll put that to you. Does the seconder wish to speak? You're reserving. Has any other member wish to speak? Councillor Mrs Hayes. Yes, um, I'm sure Councillor Virgo knows the area as much as I do, but I've been in this area for over 30 years, sir. And it's not in Congress to what has been allowed in other buildings, and particularly those that have written in have had dormers and extensions and that. Um, it is, yes, the area has a, is an old area. It's got parking problems, but you can't come along and say, oh, well, I've been able to park my car outside of a, that house for ages. I'm gonna, I can do it because I've got rid of the parking in front of mine. We've got to be very careful when we say, not in my backyard, when it has been allowed already. And that is something when I went to look at this again, it's been sensitively looked at again. It is something that would not be if taken to appeal or something, the, we would not stand or have the able to say, well, we, we started because they started without the planning. They've come in, their conditions are there, and I, I, I would ask people to support it. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Virgo. Thanks, Mr Chairman. Um, yes, indeed. I was, um, I was the councillor for this area at some point. And uh, I accept uh, Councillor Hayes's point. Um, the thing that does concern me, I have to say, uh, and I, I, I think it's hard to refuse it, of course, but this road is extremely small. And the traffic, as Councillor Hayes knows, is very, very, very difficult. In fact, that's partly why it was made one way, um, because it was just, it wasn't possible to get all these vehicles in and out. Um, so the thing that does concern me, uh, and I accept that other places have have done this already, but that isn't that that that, that sh you know if something is wrong, you shouldn't just prove it because it's wrong. Um, but I am concerned about it because I think there probably will be other bedrooms. I think it's inevitable, and there'll be other cars. And I I do pity the people down there because it's very 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 hard to park, and it will become more and more difficult. And I do think it's a bit overbearing, but that's my opinion. Um, and I've got a blue sheet if you want it. Uh, I know members might feel that they don't, or they won't accept that, but it's there if you need it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Does any other member wish to speak? Councillor Dr. Barnard. Thank you. I seconded this because, you know, recognising some of the traffic and other constraints in the area, and notwithstanding that, that I think a considerable amount of work has been done on this. I think the amended conditions are such that they will at least manage, I think Councillor Satay's made a good point, they'll manage the development on this particular property in accordance with um, planning. Um, I, I, I absolutely understand what you're saying, Councillor Virgo, because rooms can be used for whatever people want to use rooms for. I mean, the only time we can have a condition right. is there's another application. I can see no grounds, Chair, by which we could refuse this application. It seems to be compliant with all the necessary um, planning regulations, and that is why... Reluctantly, I second it because the concerns raised, but I think it is consistent with um, all our regulations and to thank the officers for the work they've done in getting to this point because it is definitely better than that which was originally submitted. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to put it to the vote. All those in favour to approve, please show. And those against? And the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, I'll leave it to you. You will see that there is a planning report. Um, and that um, if there are any questions of that planning performance report, if I could ask you to um, email me and the assistant director, unless you want something in public, Councillor Birch. Uh, 